This is Airwick's take on the miniature automatic air freshener. Well, I say air freshener, air aromatizer might be a better description. And unlike the majority of the other units, it doesn't use that system whereby it uses a plunger to push down the end of the aerosol like this. And as such, instead of its, uh, instead of its uh, cartridges doing this sort of single shot burst, like if I do demonstrate with this one, it'll do a single burst, and it just, just measures a certain portion out. Unlike that, these cylinders have a continuous spray system where as long as I held that pressed it would spray and that already stinks as it is. So to control the spray output, they have an interesting system whereby you get the cylinder in this little plastic cartridge that slots in and when you press it in, it pushes it in with quite significant force and then when it's ready to spray, it actually puts out tiny little bursts using a solenoid valve inside. So I thought it would be quite interesting to actually take that solenoid valve out and see what voltage and current it works at. When you pull this out you can actually, it sits into a little rubber end cap and it also depresses this in. And uh, when you pull it out you get that slight pop as it comes out of the pressure releasing. So I'm going to just uh, pop the battery out of that so it doesn't keep actuating. So to open this I'm going to require a security bit because obviously they don't want people opening these for some reason. Goodness knows why. So it takes three double A's and interestingly this one came from the shop with um, leakage damage from uh, the double A's it had in it, sort of generic branded ones. So let's get the first screw out of here. A little triangular screw, triangular head screw, and this one. This is a triangular security bit that I actually had to grind down with the Dremel to actually fit any of these screws. Never kind of defitted by default. Defitted by default. Uh, so let's uh, try and get this open now. It's, it's not opening. It may be clipped together as well. This may involve significant force. Let's use significant force. I'm not really bothered about putting this thing back together again. The base may actually come off completely. Is that going to help if I take the base off? Is it going to unclip? Oh, no, there's something coming apart. It's, it's, not, it's not coming apart very easily, I have to say. Yeah, this is, this is a, quite an awkward thing to take to bits. And it's also very shady, shady, slidey and shiny. So uh, what, what have we got here? How is this coming apart? Is this clipped? I may have to pause in a moment because uh, if this doesn't come apart soon to hide the explosive force which I use in it. Let's see if I can impale myself again. Oh, that's looking better. Yeah, it is clipped together quite severely. Right. So here's the two connections coming from the battery pack and they're going to this circuit board at the back and here is the automated dosing assembly with a very small solenoid valve on the top and a little push button in here that when this is pushed in, this cartridge, it pushes against that button which then activates the unit uh, and also seals into the aerosol unit. So let's uh, find what wires are going, right, let's say, uh, if I unplug that, it's all plugs, which is quite nice. Let's unplug the switch as well. Let's unplug everything. The circuit board is already showing it's, uh, that it's just got a little blob chip there, a little cob. Um, it's held on with standard screws, so let's pop that off and take a look at it before we test the valve. So it's got a green LED, it's got a big diode. Is that for a back EMF protection or something? That's an unusually big diode. Why is that? Uh, so the power comes in the red. The, di the diode is actually connected across that little valve. Uh, so it is a back EMF spike uh, suppressor for this valve. So it, this little solenoid valve at the top, so that must be quite a high power little thing. 
Um, other than that, the circuit board has that back EMF diode. It's got a transistor down here, probably for switching that. And not really much else. Not much else at all. Just a scattering of resistors, capacitor, probably for timing. Um, and that's it. Yeah, okay. That uh, switch there is... Uh, it switches different uh, settings, but it is just going straight to the chip. So it's just being treated as sort of digital input, a logic input to show what's, uh, what it's currently set at. So let's get some bits of wire and stuff them up the end of this connector. Uh, so I need some stiff wire. Have I got any on my bench here? I probably have got some on my bench here, but it's probably buried. So I'll go and grab it. Oh, there's a bit. So I shall strip this and stuff it up the end of that and then we'll see what voltage is required and what current. Well I know it's going to be about 4.5 volts but I wonder what current it's going to be to activate that little solenoid valve. Any guesses? Are you going to have a guess and estimate what current you think it might be? I think it's going to be fairly high. I think it's going to be the region of half an amp to an amp particularly given the size of that sort of back EMF spike diode. So let's get the power supply on. And I'm going to set it to about... Well, let's set it to about 3 volts. And we'll see if it triggers at 3 volts, and then I'll see what the current is at 4.5 as well. So, the output is on. Oh, this is going to stink so much. 1.2 amps. Jeez. That's a lot of current. That is a beefy little valve. Oh dear, the place is really stinking now. So yeah, uh, what voltage will it operate down to? Let's turn the voltage up slowly until it kicks in. So nothing happening at the moment. It's currently showing it's a uh, half a volt. 1 volt, 600 milliamps. It's up to an amp at 2 volts, and it clicked in at just over 2 volts. Uh. So yeah, that has potential. It has a potential. This should just slide out, I suppose, this switch. Is it clipped in any particular way? And how's this latched in? Is it slid along? So let's get the pressure. I could actually have just taken the cartridge out. Does it draw any more current or less when it's not under load? I don't think it will. I don't think that would make any difference whatsoever. Let's uh, turn the voltage up to three volts and it's going to draw exactly the same current even without uh, actuation. Clicks 1.2 amps. Oh, actually, you know what? It's worse. It's much worse. Because I had current limiting on. Oh, that's bad news. Right, hold on. That means it's going to draw significantly more. Let's turn it up to... Let's give it... Let's put the current limit up to 3 amps. So, yeah, that was actually pulling the voltage down. I didn't notice that. So it's worse than that. The actual operating current at 3 volts is... 1.8 amps. That's beefy! So that means the power dissipation, uh, 1.8 times 3, is about 5 watts. That's a 5 watt uh, solenoid valve in the end of that. So I wonder what other applications that has. Certainly it's, it's not really suited for continuous operation. It's only really intended for little bursts of operation. And how easy is it to get out? I see these little catches here, but I don't know what actually holds this in. I might want to leave it in at the moment, actually, because I might want to experiment with that uh, cylinder, or I might want to just lift it out. Do I want to take it out? Yes, I want to take it out. So let's uh, just try applying a little bit of leverage to it without breaking it. Mm, it's not totally keen on coming out. The cables are heat-staked. 
they've put them into little grooves and then they've melted it in to hold them in place. Likewise, there, this whole cluster down here. So how is this going to come out? I think it may actually slide out uh, past these catches. Let's cut the catches off and then slide it out then. It's not going back in again. Yeah, it slides out. So what do we have? We've got this tiny little magnetic valve with the rubber, uh, an O-ring first and then the seal at the back. I kind of want to see what's inside this. Okay, I think we need to investigate further and see what's actually inside this little valve. This is never going to work again. It's also been crimped together quite severely here. So is this going to even come apart easily? Am I going to impale myself again? I think I may have to pause momentarily while I destroy this, so uh, I'll be back in a moment. Well, I have to say, that was a lot simpler than I expected. Um, it's a, the body of the uh, unit, which I've just lost, there it is, has the point that the aerosol can goes into, and when you push the nozzle in, it goes first through an O-ring, and then a sort of, uh, basically a rubber washer, and then the plunger actually gets pushed into the can so it releases the gas. And the gas wants to spray at that point, this sort of area in here pressurised, it wants to spray through this tiny hole. But it can't get through that tiny hole because inside is a spring-loaded plunger. And this is the plunger, it's very, very small, and it's got a little rubber pad in the end. And that rubber pad is normally pressed down over the hole that would let the gas through. And that, it doesn't take a lot of pressure. The spring itself, that's a spring there. I don't even know if that's visible. It's tiny. Uh, it's not a very powerful spring. Uh, I suppose ultimately it doesn't have to be powerful. Uh, and you don't want it to be too powerful. Uh, I'm just squeezing it. It's modestly. But it's not, it's not really, it doesn't take much pressure. But it's enough just to hold that little rubber cap over the orifice there. And when you energise the, this is just rolling everywhere. When you energise the coils here, it pulls that plunger up the way and it releases the gas. And the gas then flows up outside the plunger and the end plate, uh, and also part of the magnetic sort of outer uh, core as such. Is that the correct terminology? Uh, it's uh, What would you call that? It, it would be, even be called the armature. Um, the magnetic outer, the, the metal outer case, has a little release hole in the top, plus a little black ceiling ring, this little black ceiling ring, which is there, and all that happens is the gas that flows up, because it's sealed, the only place it can escape is out this tiny little hole in the middle, which is sort of recessed down slightly, and it just basically flows around the solenoid uh, plunger and out the top of the unit as a, as a spray. So it's super simple, uh, a lot simpler than I was expecting. I thought it was going to be more complicated, more like the sort of washing machine style water valve, but ultimately I guess that at room temperature, uh, the butane propellant used in these, is it butane that's used in these? I think it probably is, is um, not really dramatically high pressure, so it doesn't take much to just put the little rubber plunger over that hole and stop the gas getting out. It also means that if for any reason it did overpressure, it would just be able to spray its way out. I don't ever really see that happening, though. But, uh, yeah, it's quite interesting. <clears throat> Draws a lot more current than I was expecting. I didn't really realise it was going to be just quite so powerful, but... Um, but there you go, interesting little thing. It must have other uses. Uh, even just this bit alone, the fact it seals round uh, the aerosol inlet and uh, then can be used to plunger that in, that's quite interesting in its own right, uh, even for if it's not being used as a sort of... I suppose it would be quite useful actually just using it as the solenoid valve. But uh, yes, yes, it's interesting. It's not what I was expecting. It's, uh, it's a lot simpler. Very interesting. And it goes back together quite easily. And then you can stuff a can of butane lighter gas into it. Oh. And then release it. On demand. Hmm. Hints of flamethrower coming to mind. Interesting stuff.